Welcome to the Market Geometry Morning Mentoring Sessions. It's October 8th. It's Thursday. The week's almost over. We had a lot of fun yesterday and a shocking moment when we were doing bar by bar uh, that really underscored the importance of stops. So we're going to go right back to that this morning and go over it um, to underscore how important it is to always use stops. Let me read Paul's comment here. Another problem with not having a stop, when the position moved against you in a major way, you become emotional, which is not the state you need to be in to make the right decision. You're likely to do the wrong thing as you experience fear. Well, fear and greed, yeah, absolutely. I got hit by the one in a million, learned the lesson quickly, Magnus says. And it only takes one trade to go broke. Use, yeah, how about this? I'm going to quote Yuha, ready? Like great decision day today. Trading without stops would be suicidal. Let me quote you, huh? Yeah, you here? Okay. I cannot get rich today. I can only go broke. I'm paraphrasing. That makes sense? You can give it all away in one trade. Mary says she's slower. It took her only two blow-ups, two times, to watch my losses run wide. Okay. Yoha says, I got the essence. It's, it's because my English is poor, Yoha. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, unless anybody has major complaints, everybody so far has voted for, going back to yesterday's uh, experience, and right back to that chart, and just go at it again and see if we get another golden nugget out of it. Because it's something we probably most of us don't trade. The audio is good for if you guys. Let me just double check one more time. And then I'll switch over. All right, here we go. Uh, we need to go to, I believe it was in stocks. And the wheel spins. State of Illinois, $3 billion behind on bills make me feel good about living here. There you go, Mark. All right, let me see. What the heck? We were trading, uh, we were trading Google, right? No? Yeah. I'm oh, sure it was Google. What the heck did I do that? Shazam. <laughs> there it is. All right. So it's shift... Wait, what's that trick? God darn it. Shift reset, thank you. <laughs> I've got the memory of a monkey. Now, a monkey probably has good memory. There it is. It went right to our page. Don't you like that? And this was pooped in our pants. Everybody remember this moment? All right, let me ask you a question. Mary, would you actually like to know where you would have gotten filled? Okay. Let me try a bit of magic here. It might work, it might not, but let me just try it. Google. 20 minutes. Open. Shift. Reset. Then... Because the data is already in cash now. Uh, as soon as I can see, my eyes are still kind of tearing up because it's bright down here. The heck? I know you're here. There we go. Data. Properties. Symbol. Okay, I'm good. No, I'm not. Let's just see what would have happened. It may not show us, but all right, the fifteenth it was, right? 
Note to yourself, Paul. Here we come up and we're flatlining. We're playing with the short. And there we are getting, here you are getting popped right here, so to speak. Well, maybe not. Nope, I guess not. It must be news out. Let's see. 16. Well, nope. guess not. Well, hang on. Let me. Do, I'll go back to the other one. I'll tell you in a second. Anyway, you wouldn't have got filled as badly. Trust me. They would have raped you, so to speak. Not, it was July, huh? July fifteenth. Well, let's not waste any more time on it. I'll figure it out and let you know tomorrow. I still hate stocks, Mary says. Okay. <laughs> You know why I hate them is because people can lie and cheat and steal on the on the reports. And then they, they do end up going to jail sometimes, but still, your money's gone. Yeah. I don't do any stocks, just so you know. All right, here we go. So, does anybody want to be short, he said. Why isn't this line here? And while we're putting it here, let's let's move it all the way up here. How's that? Well, no. Listen, none of the no the commodity reports are rigged. But the thing about it is, the difference is in the commodity reports, I know how to rig them. In the stock reports, they just. <laughs> I mean, somebody knows how they rig them, but it ain't me. How's that? So, yeah, I understand what you're saying. I I don't, you know, I'll I'll play a fixed game, but I prefer to know when the fix is in. In stocks, it just seems to me that uh, it's legal, you know, not not legal. It's normal to have your hands in the till. Uh Accountant's gone wild. Um, Jennifer, are you here yet this morning? No? Yeah, here you go. Let me ask you a question. When they put Tommy Skilling's brother in jail from Enron, because basically they were calling around to the other, other trading desks at Enron and saying, let's push the price up so that we can sell it higher. Didn't you fall off your chair laughing? Because I mean, people in cash foreign exchange do that all the time. That that's how market makers make money. They were they just had to have yeah exactly. Well, you know what, Jennifer? I have a book called, that I have to finish in a couple of years called "The Wild Wild West of Foreign Exchange" from the early '80s. If you'd like to join me with some stories, I view the masses that trade stocks as a herd of cattle. Oh, you did the truth, says Paul. CNBC. Oh my God. I, I I can't uh, I cannot watch that stuff, but anyway, in cash foreign exchange, I did that all the time. I closed. I can I can say that I actually cornered a country. How's that? I cornered the country of Belgium. No offense to all of you that are Belgium, that are in Belgium, and made them close the financial Belgium currency. But I I did it because I had behind me a corporate order, and after two weeks they held their hands up and said we surrender, and they went back to just trading one currency instead of two. But I had this huge corporate order behind me, so I could push it, you know, wherever I wanted to. People just quit quoting. They wouldn't, it wouldn't quote you on ten thousand dollars, let alone ten million. They went, "I surrender," and the Belge finally, finally over a week, and said, "Okay, I give up." <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mark, that's a great analogy. Trading stocks reminds me of my five, my four-year-old playing soccer. Everyone chasing the ball like a flock of sheep. Yeah, I think that's right. How does that work, Chef? You know what? I'll do that another morning, Chef, and I'll explain exactly what we were doing because the 
the first of all, it's not illegal what we were doing, but second of all, it's been so long, um, you know, they couldn't sue me if they wanted to. But uh, And I'll even tell you the company that gave me the order. But uh, it's a funny story. And we had a lot of fun, by the way. I'll also tell you how the Mexican government uh, turned four grown men into four crying men. But anyway, here we go. So we all pooped the bed. It's not as bad as it looks, Mary. Trust me. They would have let you out a little better than this. And we'll go a couple bars because I think we peaked ahead. So here it is. It's respecting that. Uh, and again, this isn't a median line. This is an action-reaction line that we built. Anybody have any ideas up here? Before I go any further, get any ideas other than just look for look for structure? I guess what I'm thinking of is just let this thing do what it's going to do and see some structure for them. And then go, oh, wait, I got an idea. But at the moment, I don't have any ideas other than this balance line right here might be support. Anybody else have any other uh, other ideas? Yeah, go along and retest the breakout. Okay, I got that, Shabir. It's like a rocket. Okay. Let's just watch and see what we get. So we've got, you can see it expended a lot of energy. Now look at the size of the bars when it gets to the reaction line, which would be like the upper median line parallel. It gets up here. This is where it's supposed to run out of energy. And sure enough, it does run out of energy in the sense that it slows down. It doesn't have to turn down. Upswinds are of similar size. So you want to go, okay, how about this? That's not an awful idea. How about this? Well, we're already at 1 to 1, just so you know. This is 1.618, but let's double check. Make sure I got the set right. 1.0, 1.618. Okay. Yeah, that's on FIB, yes. Okay. So we're already at 1 to 1. And this is a good example of why not to sell the upward sloping median line. That's exactly right, David. The lower A. Let me measure this for you. Um, well, that's, that's still going to give you, look, it gives you that 1.618 target really nice, even if you do that. That 1.618 target seems to be an interesting one. Let's keep our eyes on that. How about that? All right. Small, small bars. A lot of people, believe me, a lot of people now, Remember, these are 13-minute bars, so this is only uh, probably mid-morning. A lot of people are basically throwing up. Right back up to the, we'll call it upper media line parable, but you know it's the reaction line. Small range bars. People are shocked. They don't know whether or not. The longer this gap stays open, the stronger this is. Remember that. Right back up to the upper parallel again. Small, tiny range bars, but still hugging this upper parallel. That's why you don't want to go short against an upsloping line. That's why I say this over and over again. You get a 10% premium by, for trading with the trend instead of against it. That's why I didn't want to get short here unless we took out some lows. It wasn't that I didn't like this action. I want to show me the sellers because I want to trade with the trend. I want to be able to draw a downsloping line. I couldn't. Because we were putting so small amount of money on the table, I'm not against it, and I think you probably would have get filled would have got filled somewhere in here, not up here. I think this is the morning opening. And in the after hours I think you probably would have got filled right here. But you would have woke up if you were you know, if you didn't pay attention right afterwards, you'd have woke up and seen this bar and thrown up. Alright, so let's see. 
Still, small, tiny bars. All right, we're trading down a little bit. Still, look at the bars. Look at the bar action. Even compared to down here, the bar action, people are shocked. Absolutely shocked. Do we have a biological section in the glossary? Poop the bed, wet your pants, throwing up. Not a bad idea, Paul. Or a four-year-old. We could call it the four-year-old section. All right, so here we are. Rounding top-ish. Am I reading too much into this? Because these, the size of these bars are nothing. We took out one swing low to the left. What would it take to get you interested in getting short? <laughs> Michael says, the rounding top is what got me last time. <laughs> uh, absolutely. What would it take? Show me weakness. Well, what would show you weakness? Take out 418 low. Yeah, you got it. That's what I was looking for below. Take this out. What else? Anything else? Any el anybody else got any ideas? Let the market show more bars. Okay, I'm with Ron. Okay. <clears throat> This is one, a break below the consolidation, perhaps, and then we could maybe draw some downsloping. Right now, it's almost impossible to draw something downsloping. That's not a bad idea, Dan. Um, this is one where, remember, don't confuse activity with achievement, okay? There's nothing wrong with sitting on your hands and saying, uh, I don't really want to play this market right now. Let me see if I can... Let the picture clear up. I can trade something else. What would make me go long? Well, two of you asked at the same time. And and uh, Jack's, wait. Jack says, it seems hard to stand in the way of a freight train. There you go. Igshan says, what will make me go long? Uh... I don't like gaps. Normally, I might play against, I, I might actually still play against this with a stop underneath this swing right here because that's not very much. So that's a possibility. I'm not wild about it if they have the ability to push and fill this gap if it happens relatively soon. Depends on the market structure. I'll have to see how it's coming down. But I might play against here with a stop underneath here. If it got underneath here, then I'd be interested in getting short. How's that? Test and retest of the center line. That's a good idea. Now, Ron says, if there's another exhaustion gap, then refocus. How about this? Richard Dennis did a wonderful study. And what he found is that when... Now, this was on, just on commodities. So we're stretching the limits of his statistics. But what he found is that when commodities when you are position trading and commodities start to gap higher let's say for example orange juice or cocoa when they start to gap higher only half the move is unfolded at best so if you've already paid the pain so to speak hang in there because the meat is yet to come once it starts to gap your way like this so if you get another gap Ron yahoo doesn't a short squeeze like this end with a blast up? Well, some of you might have heard me tell my orange juice story. If you haven't, I'm not going to tell it this morning. But, um, yes, it generally does end up with a blast up. But it, things tend, you know, it's first, first uh, Newton's first law. Things in motion tend to stay in motion. Well, let's see what we get. A whole lot of nothing. And still look at the size of the bars. We're back to these bars again before we moved. And we're going nowhere. All right, now we pop above the tops. For me, that rules out the rounded top theory. And, of course, that completely deflates the rounded top theory.
Note that we close in the middle of the range, however. We get right back up to the upper median line parallel or the reaction line, close in the center. So there are sellers. There's some supply up here as it gets overextended. Those are probably the market makers. Interesting. Now, now note that the bars, if you haven't noted, look down here, the bars had widened out. Here, the bars have widened out. Okay. So we've gone from inactivity to now, we've got fist fighting going on now. Higher or lower, guys. Higher or lower, guys. They're trying to figure out which way it's going. The buyers are back. Yeah, we got up toward the fib seller level. They stepped in. The buyers are here. The sellers are here. Note that the bar closed on its low. Absolutely. All right, what do we think here? Do we think we will take out, I'm going to make it easy for you. Will we take out the horizontal bar mark three first or the horizontal bar make four, mark four first? Tending toward three. Paul says, sorry, just don't know. Some people are saying rangy. Okay. Going to the green line. All right. So it's about two to one. Three will get taken out first. We've also got about 10% of the people saying, don't know, rangy. Let's see what we get. Double bottoms. Inside bar. Really all inside bars. Just took out the double bottoms. Just about tap three, but we haven't taken it out. But we closed near its high. Flirted with three, coming back up. Notice that the ranges, the sizes of the bars, have closed back in. So people are less in it, are less active than they were. Let me put it to you this way. Are you ready? They're putting you to sleep, folks. Remember how quiet it got before that? The tank, tank of gas is nearly full. Okay. Jack says they purposely drew three too low. Okay. <laughs> Uh, now remember, I have no idea. I don't trade Google. I have no idea what's going on. I didn't go back and cheat. I don't know if you guys did. I don't. I didn't even bother. I have other stuff to do. Here we go. Oh, let me make the official announcement. If you don't know, I'm doing something for Mirus Futures today at 3:30 on the internet. It's free. M I R U S. It's probably also on the uh, CME calendar. I'm replacing somebody else that couldn't show up. It's just going to be basic median lines. Nothing. Nothing earth-shattering. We're just going to go over the basics. Um, I, I don't know if I'll be uploading it. Uh, it'll certainly be on their page. Um, I don't Actually, I don't know if it'll be on marketgeometry.com. If we can get a copy, I will. Here we go. Small range bars. Now we're testing the center line or median line. I did send out a link in email, by the way, if, if you didn't get it, just so you know. Magnus wants to buy this median line. Are you long at this median line, Magnus? And where's your stop? If so, if so, where's your stop? I'll let you be long right at the median line right now if you want. Just tell me where your stop's at. Shabir says he wants to be long here as well. Center line below the fill line. Don't make it too hard for me. Hey, George, how are you? The bar closes, no separation, he says. So, Magnus, are you in or not? Below the range. So your stop is underneath uh, 
this poke right here. Oh, you want to buy a retest. All right, we're, we're okay. Okay. Stop at 432. All right. I don't see a good stop either, but okay. Who said 432? Ron? It's 70 degrees in Phoenix. Oh, man, don't make me feel bad. All right, here we go. Some people are long. I'm not going to say who. Their stops at 432. Here we go. Ready? Uh-oh. Double bottom bars. Anybody want to be long? Paul says he's now changing his mind. He thinks it'll get through three before four now, just so you know. He's on record. <laughs> uh, does anybody want to be long here? And if so, where's your stop? Quick. Some people are long right at the center line, which is 435.70, stop 432.00. Me, I'm, I don't see anything yet. I'm gonna buy the green line. Theo says, "Okay." Below the double bottom, nothing to indicate long or short. Okay. And we're a bit higher. Ron's looking happy. Small bar, double tops, lots of little tiny nothing bars. Ah, wide range bar higher, clo closes on its high. Ron, what's your profit target? Four forty-eight. So your stops four thirty-two. Your profit target is four forty-eight. Upper median line parallel. Okay, Ryan says four forty-four. I have this as 445, Ron, just so you know. Ron's driving. Shabir says, no profit stop. I'm not using a profit target. Stops below the swing low. All right, so it stops below here. All right, where is it? 432? Okay. Please draw a sliding parallel. I want to get long now on retest of sliding parallel. Okay. I'm easy. You want to get right at it? You're just putting the order in? Krishna? Okay. So that's going to be at 435 and a half. All right, here we go. Looking good, Ron. Looking better, Ron. Even better, but closed on its low. Two wide range bars. You would expect that. Price would have a little bit of problem when it got up toward this upper median line parallel, and it does because it's sprinted up there with no swings at all. So when it's vertical like this, it does tend to stop and slow down and close on its low. That's okay. That's that's not abnormal. It shouldn't you shouldn't get excited up here. You shouldn't have been crying down here, remember. Trade on emotionally. Ron's moving his stop to 440. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Jay says that he was in, but he's now he's now he was out now near the upper median line parallel. So you're using the 10% rule there, Ron. All right, Jay. If you get within 10%. Yeah, Mr. Dennis, Vin, chef. That's Richard Dennis. That's okay. He's not listening. You, or you can call him Mr. Turtle. How's that? Now here we go. So you're at 448 profit target, Ron, with a stop at 440, correct? Jay is out. Okay. Krishna, are you still buying at the sliding parallel? What is the 19? 
I don't understand the question, Brian. All right, Chris has canceled his buy order. Oh, the ten percent rule. The ten percent rule is if you get if you get ninety percent of the move from the center line to the upper median line parallel, you take your profit there. Don't try and squeeze out that last ten percent. We call that lunch money. How's that? It works very well. Yes. Same thing if you're getting towards a prior high, come come down ten percent. Don't try and squeeze out that last little bit. That's where every that's where the fist fighting starts. And this low was, Ron, 440.05, but look, it closed on its highs. Saved by the bell. Still at 440, Ron? So far, you're working like a charm, my friend. Oh! <laughs> Are you enjoying trading these stocks? Krisha, good job. You pulled your order. No, we're, we're going to beat this because, you know what? I hate stocks. Did I mention that, says Mary? All right, Jack, I'm going to repeat you in a second. Here, the reason why we like doing this is because this is going to beat the importance of stops into your head. I can't. I can't make you all trade live with me each of you with a live account. If I could, I would. But this is a great way to force you to feel the indigestion that comes from not having a stop in the market and going, what am I supposed to do now? Is it harder to trade stocks because of gaps? No, not really, Sim. If you just get used to it, because remember, they do trade, we're looking at day only, and they do trade overnight. So it's it, it's just that um, there's a lot of news that comes out after 3 o'clock. Remember, I stopped this not at 3.15, but at 3 o'clock, because that's when cash stops, conventional cash stops. But they st they still trade. They suspend trading, then they reopen. But um, you do get more gaps. Nice move by Ron, moving the head stop up. Yep. Except he didn't get filled here. The low was 440.05. They just missed him. They closed on the high right before the news. Then they jacked him around. But my guess is he got filled somewhere in here. And remember, he was long right here. So even if they filled him on the opening, he didn't take a loss. But my guess is he didn't get filled on the opening. He got a better fill. What causes gaps? Generally, it's news. Earnings. Expiration of options. Is news not manipulation? It is manipulation. Cheating CEOs. Let me just tell you, having been on a board of directors, uh, Jennifer, at the First Chicago, and being able to trade only at the windows, there's a you know there's a period every quarter where you can trade as an insider. You'd be shocked if you actually charted the highs and the lows against the open windows. How well CEOs do. How well the major moves coincide with the windows. It's almost shocking. Magnus says, Jim Cramer manipulated the pre-Dow index as he confessed in an interview. Would the gap disappear in a shorter time frame? Well, it would disappear if I'm doing a 24-hour chart. This isn't a 24-hour chart, Claudio. This is 8.30 until 3 o'clock, not 3.15, and not overnight. Can it be seen beforehand? Uh, all I will say is this. I was a board of directors. I wouldn't say what this is of a public company, I know some of what goes on and won't trade stocks anymore. Numbers can be massaged by companies as well as by governments. Well, you've heard me tell you that I work for the Bureau of Labor Statistics and I would turn in numbers and they would call me back and say, we don't like these numbers, make them this. 
no, Claudio, it wouldn't. You wouldn't see it in a one-minute bar chart. But if, but if, you, if I turned this on so that you could see 24 hours, you would then see there'd still be gaps, but they wouldn't be this wide. Jay Hunt says, "Why would I use a day session chart? Aren't you missing important price action?" Yes and no. Um, I do miss the junk that goes on overnight. However, you'll find that if you spend some time using 39-minute day session only, 8.30 until 3, not 3.15, S&P charts, Dow charts, um, if you trade at Russell, uh, as well as stocks, they give cleaner signals if you're intraday trading than if you trade overnight. However, if you're going to hold them, you get a lot of this. But intraday trading, if you learn how to use these gaps, they give you some wonderful signals that you would not get if you're using 24 hours. So it's a trade-off. Look at You can look at both. It just depends on what you're doing. This is 39 minutes from 8.30 in the morning Chicago time until only 3 o'clock, not 3.15. 39 minutes because that's 390 minutes divided by 10. Actually, this is this is actually a 13 minute, so it's one third of that because we wanted more price action. Okay. Newcomers to trading seem to flock to volatility, thinking it means profits. I did the same thing until I learned that high volatility is akin to a casino. I don't like to gamble. That's exactly right. 39 minute cash open period. Yes. Uh, Jay Hunt says, futures, like the E-minis, would I use three as the closer, 315 CDT close? Depends on what you're looking for. If you're going to day trade, if you're going to use day session only, then I would use the 3 o'clock close and 39-minute bars, or some variant of it, either 13, 39, or 78. If you're going to use 24 hours, then I wouldn't even use time. I would use volume, something like that, ticks. All right, here we go. Oh, wait, who's long? Somebody said they're long here at the test of the lower median line parallel or the action line. Jack is long at, ready, 429.75. What's your stop? Let me, yeah, there we go. Ah, uh, God damn it. Sorry, Jack. Fill the gap. 429 and three quarters. You're long. Underneath this low? Yeah, don't choke on me now. That would be 423 and... 423.15. That work? You're, you're a man for staying with it. 429 and a half, 423 and a quarter. Chef wants to go along at the baseline. Stops at 426, Ron says. Where are you along at, Ron? Oh, okay, I see. Well, yeah. So the Jack is going to go underneath here. Which is a big stop, but okay. Here we go. Wide range bars. Tried to get up. Closing on its low. Closing back on its high. Leave double bottoms. Just above the baseline. Now notice that we're inside the gap now. We left open this gap. Now we've left open this gap. Let me ask you a question. Which gap is going to get filled? The gap on the left or the gap on the right? Which gets, which gets filled now? Ron is now long at 428. Where's your stop, Ron? Most people are saying gap on the left. I got a couple of brave souls saying on the right. Just below 424. Okay, Ron, I got you. Is there a switchback? Uh, 
there might be a switchback against this line, we'll know that it's bar. Yohas says he does not have an opinion. That's a fair assessment. To me, I see, look at it this way. We may just be filling this mountain. Actually, if you think of the gap, we have actually filled the mountain of the gap. But, all right, most people are voting for the left, a couple brave souls to the right. Ron is long right here. His stop's right underneath here. Here we go. Jack's long up here as well. We're back above the, we're back testing the action line, if you will. Magnus is also long, okay? Climbing higher. Now, this is a switchback. See it trying to get back above the line? What was support has become resistance. That makes this line a switchback until we bust through it. Okay, so somebody wants the first warning line. It seems to be about there. You can do anything you want. Somebody wants to get short. Shannon, you want to get short? Where do you want to get short? Can I draw a small fork? Sure. Like that one? Or... I'll go ahead and do it. I don't think it's going to help. Modified shift's not going to help you. All right, so can I take this median line out? Say bye-bye. Theo wants to get short at the green line with a stop just above the top of this gap. Okay. Okay, well, you like that red median line? Okay, I'll put it back in. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but okay. All right, let's see what we get. Ron says his target on his long is 437. All right. Small range bars. They're putting you to sleep again, folks. Jay Hunt's buying at 426. Let's just adjust this a little bit. All right, ready? Here we go. Small range bars. Closing on its low. Closes on a tie here now. Shabir, me too. <laughs> Small range bars closing the other highs, though. Alternating closes. Now we break out in the upsides. Where was you? For 438. We're still 437. We're still a ways away. So nobody's traded yet. We're past. We're in this diamond, if you will. See it? The bottom held. It'll be interesting to see if the top of the diamond holds. Jay says he doesn't want to get long anymore at 426. You don't want to get long down here? No, you don't have to. I, I'm not trying to bully you into it. I just asked. Yeah, you got three more bars before we get there. In or out? 
Sí. Bien. Where's your stop? Didn't see the question, Krishna. How would I train? So oh, how would I train such a diamond? Um, it's down slopey, so I don't want to get long. So I'd be looking. If I want to get long, I'd be looking to get long after it passes this energy point here, with a stop then underneath these double lows. If I wanted to get long, does that make any sense? End of day gap, big price move coming up, says Guido. I hope you didn't look ahead. All right, let's see what we get. I don't like to trade right at the diamonds, just so you know. I'll take profits at the diamonds, but I don't like to initiate the diamonds. They tend to get more volatile. Right at the energy points of the diamonds. Oh, Guido's looking back, he says. Okay. All right, here we go. It doesn't look like Jay's going to get filled. Inside bars. Jay, you still got your orders in? Okay, Jay orders pulled at 426. He's no longer a buyer. How'd you do here, Ron? Damn, 432 and a half. But still, but closes on its low. Now see it trying to break above the diamond, and we get an exhaustion bar lower. So how would I handle this, Krishna? If I want to get long, I'd wait till we get about 10% past this diamond up in here so that I can trade underneath this, put my stop underneath these, these double bottoms down here. Magnus says a stop is a break even. Can I use, can I use an upsloper with the, okay. Like that, Mark. If we're far enough over, I'd take the first test, Krishna. If we're close, I'd take a test and retest. You're long where, Mark? Right here? Okay, Mark is long right now at 4.30 and a quarter. Where's your stop? Beneath this prior low, or or the C pivot, the, this prior low right here. Okay, so he's long at 4:30, and his stop is below 4 is is a 4:27, even. How's that? Long at 4:30, and a quarter stop at 4:27. All right, here we go. Struggling on the line. Well, so far, I just drew in this blue line, and we don't know if it's meaningful yet. Short at the retest of the red line above the spike. Who's that? Igshan, you're short here. And where's your stop, my friend? Above the spike. Okay. So he's going to, sh he's short here with a stop above the spike. Okay. I'll let you do that. Here we go. Ready? Made a new low, but closed on its highs. Double tops. Right at the red lower median line parallel. Ixan looking good. Where's your profit target, Ixan? Well, you look good there for a second, Mark. Yeah, what's your profit target, Ixan? Is that a lazy Z? Yes, it is. It's just a bit wide. But we don't know that this blue line is any good. Lower red line he's going for. So you're going for uh, 425 and a half. 
Okay. Very good. Here we go. The wheel spins. Inside bar. Would I say Google has taken out two swing lows to the left when it entered the gap to the left? Yes, it took out this swing and this swing. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Now that prior highs have been taken out, what he want, uh, Krishna wants to try along at the retest of the sliding parallel to the blue fork. So you want to get long down here on a sliding parallel? Krishna, my Krishna, my Krishna? All right, so that will put you long right at about, uh, we're going to give you 428 and a half if it gets there, all right? And your stop's going to be underneath here? Okay, here we go. You're long, Krishna. Double bottoms. Smaller range bars. Nice. For Krishna. Ikshan. Break even. Not yet. Okay. Looks like a possible developing multi pivot line from top of the last big high drawn to the left. Mm. You're saying that, Andy? Oh, 15th? Uh, that is a 15th. No? Or do you mean all the way from here? Towards the 15th. I'm doing my best. What's that do for you? Horizontal. You don't like my slope line? All right. Horizontal toward the 15th. All right. Um, oh, I, okay. Hang on. I'm slow, but I'm slow. Andy's saying, what about, it's kind of, it's kind of hidden by this blue, but there's a multiple top here as well. So we got multiple bottoms here, multiple tops here. So we've got the multi-pivot line right here. Yeah? Too many suggestions for me to keep drawing. How's that? All right, so let's go. Yes, the red, the lower median line seems to be acting like a center line at the moment, yes. If we extend it forward and backwards, absolutely, Krishna. Mark wants out, it's taking too long. Isn't that against your trading plan? I'm not letting you out. Okay. Consolidation, consolidation. I'm not going to take you out. But.
Now we've left a series, we've left a multi-pivot line down here as well. See it? How's that? Morning, AK. How are you? New range. Yeah. Nice bottom of a range. Nice rolling chop in that range. Yeah. Absolutely. Half off. Timmy is short. Half off now. Down here, you're going to use the 10% rule? You took a short at the red line. Yeah. Okay. Theo's also half off. Okay. Hey, Sean, you still hanging? Move stop to break even now. Okay. We're back at the energy point. Another retest of this red line, which has become a switchback. You can see it as resistance, then support, now resistance again. Now we've come down and broken and closed below this multiple pivot line. Igshan, where are you going for all the way down to this red lower, this red warning line? Am I correct? 426. Okay. Almost here, my, my man. Oh! Let's see what the low was. 427 and a half. Darn close. And we're right back at the red lower median line. Parallel with another wide range bar. I'll tell you what. They're wild and woolly, aren't they? We still have to close the gap. Okay. Let's move this up and also... Widen it out. How's that? That's better. Still heading lower. Why? <laughs> Just when you think you got it? Closes on its low after a slightly higher high. Another low, closes middle of the range. Notice that the size of the bars have widened out again. It's chaos. Hey, yeah, Ron, I think that's, yeah. Do I want to trade in here? No, I don't. I'm looking somewhere else. That's the other thing I don't like about stocks. There's 100,000 of them. And how the hell do you know which one's to trade? I'll tell you one tip that I have, just so you know. This is a great comment. Let me stop what I was going to say. This is like a nice mini market. We're all buying and selling at different points, even though we're all familiar with the same techniques. That's exactly right, Jack, which is what we do in uh, group mentoring, even though I wasn't there yesterday. I'm, I haven't been there recently. The idea is not to hear what I have to say. It's for you guys to watch each other show your trades in the same or different markets because you're all using the same techniques on the same or different markets in different ways some of them you're long and some of them you're short in the same market and you can make or lose money but it's more to get to see somebody other than me use these techniques now somebody says i keep asking magnus there's a reason why i'm doing this you keep asking us what we want to do could you comment more on what you would want to do it's nothing that if nothing that's fine just mention it since we want to learn from you okay that's fine i told you yesterday when you guys were going short that it had to take out a low for me to get interested. The com the comment from Ron that this is chaos is exactly how I feel about this market right now. I have no interest. There ha I have yet to see market structure that spawns some interest for me. If we take out that low over to the left, I might be interested in getting short. And I know I'll be getting short at a worse level, but I'll know a whole lot more. But at the moment, there's nothing that wa that makes me want to trade. The moment I see something that looks interesting, I have no idea what the average volume for Google is, Don. But it's a lot. Unemployment, 521 versus 534. I wish I could read. Thank you, Mark. These are claims. Paul says his only trade on this chart is to head to Starbucks to buy a lot of coffee. Indecision of the players. Well, I think it's two-sided. 
Let's see what we get. More inside, nothing. More inside, nothing. We did make a higher high, closed about in the middle of the bar. Still just batting around on this center line, if you will, the lower median line parallel. Wide range bar, look at it. They run the stops. They can't get above this high or this high, and then they close in the lower third. Interesting bar. This is where you need to put your hat on and look at each bar as it unfolds. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, which stocks to trade? Thank you for reminding me. And the, yeah, the bars have changed. The size of the bars have changed dramatically from the prior bars. That tells you that uh, something's about to happen. Okay, here's an interesting tip for you. If you want to dabble in stocks, Ikshan says he takes his money and runs away. Where are you out of Ikshan? Just give me a price. You made money. Um, I go to Stock Twits. He says he's out of the flat. Okay. Um, I go to StockTwits.com. I don't even think you have to sign up. They have this thing at the bottom that shows you they have they went from having 75,000 members. Now they have 375,000 or 400,000 members just in three months. They're growing like a weed. But what's really cool is using Twitter technology, people put up their charts and their ideas and their trades or whatever, and you can see the top 10 stocks, currencies, and futures talked about. So if you want to know the top 10 stocks that are tweeted, they're sitting there for you, which shows you what 300,000 people are looking at. So one day it might Bank of America might be in there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just interesting. And that's, I think that's an interesting way to filter out stocks. If you go, hey, let me chart some stocks this morning, go over to StockTwits.com and take a look at the top 10 talked about or charted stocks on StockTwits. This is pretty fascinating. How about finding someone that is really bad on StockTwits and fading him? Well, you know, actually, Magnus, somebody tried uh, to find 10 really bad models that lost a lot of money and build the other side of them, and unfortunately it doesn't work. I don't know why. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense that it doesn't work, but it doesn't work. Well, But that's another story. Okay, here we go. Ikshan. Bah. Yeah, I'm not going to do it. Looks like a horizontal range. Out at break even, says Magnus. Anybody left? You're in what, Chef? What are you doing? Mark's cooked. What I think of a short now. Well, let's take a look. Nope. We haven't even closed this gap. How about that? It does look like a topping formation. Let me shock you all, all right? Ready? We don't have that much time. Well, we have 20 minutes left, but ready for this? Yeah, we've got an island left over. Let's do this. Oh, no, you know what? Instead of that, how about this? Um, Google 13 open. Then we want to go shift reset. All right. Now, on this one, I want to go. I want to go wherever the hell we were. Let's see if we can figure out where we were at. Window. Where's the other Google? There we go. We're on July 17th. All right. Everybody remember that. There we go. Now we've got a we've got a much less messier chart. 
How about that? Three FOM speeches today. Bernanke at primetime tonight at 7. Ooh, doggies. They're ramping up the... They must get paid by the word, don't you think? So here we are. This is where we... This is where somebody asked me if I'm in. Yeah. Okay. We haven't even closed the gap. They're going to try and save the dollar. I don't know that they care. They have so many, so much on their plate. I don't know if they even care. How's that? Let me go back and double check. No, we're at July 21st. I'm a nitwit. Did I tell you I was a nitwit? July 21st. We go up, and then we get a gagging down move. Come on. There it is, right there. All right. <clears throat> they want to cut the dollar's value in half? I think that's probably true. All right, so now this line's going away. This line's going to stay. I'm going to draw in the Andy line, which is this, Andy's balance line. Let's make it gray. Let's make this line. gray. Let's clean it up a bit. Let's see if we can make some headway. Okay. The dollar Titanic has hit the iceberg. Passengers are running for the lifeboats where the crew insists all is well. They, well, the crew insists all is well as they get in the lifeboats. That's what you should say. Chef's long and his stop is at 424. Okay. You think they wash every, wash and rinse everybody out? Okay, here we go. Double bottoms, close on on its highs. Working its way higher. Much nicer. What's your uh, profit target there, Chef? Top of the range? 430? 430. 30. Middle, middle of the range. All right. All right. Not looking for much. You just want to taste. You want to wet your beak. Double top, double bottom. Uh-oh, might do it. High was. You're out, Chef, at 4.30. He says he's swinging his bigger size. Okay. Chef's out of 430. Nice little profit. Trading within this range. Anybody see anything of significance other than this range is containing price right now? That's why I went to the clearer chart. And that's another lesson for you. If you're confused, either clear the chart you're on or make a clone of it and then hit delete all. Start with a fresh chart and go, hmm, this looks completely different now. Because a lot of those lines are tied to you emotionally. You've been stopped out or you've been following that line and it's been broken or whatever. Okay, so go back to a clear chart and go, what do I think now? Slide down if I use a shift tell. Eh. There's not enough touches for me to bother. I guess I could do this. I know some, some people are begging me to do this. Right? But with this gap hanging underneath here, let me change the color. I don't really know that I want to. But I'll, I'll put it in there for you. Just triple bottoms. I hate Google now. <laughs> My wife called the top in Google. I'm trying to get her to be on the DVD. But 
She called the Google to the de- top to the day, by the way, and uh, told me to go short. But is not that gap filled? No, that gap is not filled. I know people will go, go draw over to here and say, hey, did that gap get filled? So let's draw it. <clears throat> well, it's semantics. How's that? Does it, does it touch? Yes. But as far as I'm concerned, until it comes down to here, it ain't filled. This is the gap from here to here, as far as I'm concerned. Until it comes down to here, it ain't filled for me. But that's just me. That's just me. People should do this on their own on a regular basis. They'll get more from it than they realize. Okay, take care, Paul. Um, yes, or use replay, either one. What about a horizontal line from the gap bottom at the left to the right? Um, that's okay, yeah. So from down here. But we're going to have to deal with the regular gap first. So you're saying right here. Am I, am, am I correct, Ron? No, above. You mean this? To the left, the bottom, higher. Oh, here? As a multiple p- pivot line? Okay. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but okay. All right, here we go. Let's put it in play. we got about 10 minutes before we see Mr. Sean. I might ask, are range clusters normal in Google? I have the faintest idea, Michael. It was fascinating to grab Google because I don't watch it on a regular basis, certainly not intraday. I'd lie and tell you an answer, but I'm not like that. Here we go. We're still playing around inside the range. Still playing around inside the range. Okay, new low. Took out the triple bottoms. Now we're turtling, so to speak. Ranges are starting to get smaller, but no, maybe not. A little bit higher, so we'll bounce off this line. More consolidation. New low. New low. Double bottoms. Back up. Pretty much took out the double bottoms. I'm going to just call that a triple bottom. Anyone want to play here? The gap is not filled till we get down here as far as I'm concerned. Let me say it again. Right here. This is the gap to me. Double up. Double up and throw up. Gerald, you want to buy at this line right here? And your stop is underneath here, I assume? Mark wants to buy if they fill the gap with your stop underneath here. Stop is at 424. Well, that would leave this. That means you wouldn't be hiding underneath the structure. You sure you don't want to be underneath the structure? That would only take, uh, I don't know, about another 50 cents. Hide under the structure. Okay. So you want to buy at this line. Hide underneath the structure. Okay, here we go. And uh, who's buying? Mark's buying at the gap fill. I'm going to see if it tests and retests at the gap fill. Let me extend this line. I'm not ready to play yet, but I'm watching with interest. And, of course, we go higher as soon as everybody wants to get long. Up oh, there's your chance. So, 
That's got to give you some uh, heartburn. Let's see. Mark's, uh, Mark's long. Uh, who else is long? Hold your hands up. Some other people are long. Gerald, yes. Mark and Gerald, okay. Low. 423.97. Aren't you glad you didn't? Uh, 423.72. But this low is 423.34. So you're at, let's say, 24. Still long, yep. Closed at the low, yes. Not pretty. But leaves double bottoms, rockets out of the hole. What's your profit target, guys? Four forty six, Jack says. Yeesh. Mark. Gerald. Profit targets. Top of the range. Okay. That makes sense. How about inside the top of the range? How about right below here at like at four thirty one and a half? What do you think about, what do you think about that? 431, that's good. I like that. 431 even, we're going to make it. Okay, good. Paul is at 445, Paul McManus. Okay. Buy retest of the dark gray line now. Stop below the double bottoms. Okay, I got you, Matt. Yeah. Here we go. All right. You're in and out, Matt. And uh, let's see. Everybody else is still long. They're not happy, but they're still long. That was a quick lot of money, wasn't it, man? At least it was quick. Is this a trader's market? Uh, I don't know. You should learn some lessons, if nothing else. Coming out of the hole nice, leaves double tops. We wanted action so that we could get emotions. Don't buy downtrends. There you go. This is a mess to me. I have, I'll see something I, that I like, and when I see it, I'll tell you. How's that? But so far, I haven't seen it. A traitor's market. T R A T O R. Yes. Coming out of the hole. The boys are still long. Boys are still long. You really want it to take out this high if you're long. Yes, we could. Hang on. <sighs> Let me catch my breath. Hang on. Um, I think it goes like this. It's either that or... Yeah, I think it, I think it goes like this. What's that do for you? Everyone's, everyone's getting Googled, someone said. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you'll be switching from Bing to Google after this, huh? Now, if you like that, actually, it's not bad off this reaction low. How about that? Okay. Uh oh. Are we going to have a winner here for a change? 431 is well, somebody's target. That's Mark's target. Oh, man. Good good time to draw an upsloper in case a C has formed. Uh, you're so flat, I don't think it's going to mean anything. And we run down. Right back in the sloop. We're consolidating. That's good. This line is held nicely on this retest. Hang in there, Mark. Washington to the lows. Yep. Craig's, got, Craig's moving half down to 431 with Mark. Okay. 
They heard you. Oh, and Mark gets a winner. Greg gets half off. Who else is out? Very nice. Three higher bottoms, yes. Three drives to the bottom, absolutely. It looks ready to take off. Yeah, and it did, yeah, absolutely. Gerald King is out of his. Yeah, Mark's out of his. And Jack's out of half of his. Rest to break even, Craig says. Okay. Look at that. Are we having fun yet? All right, so let's see. Who's still alive here? Craig, you're at break even. And you want to go all the way up to 440, or do you want to go all the way up to the mountaintop, just about to the mountaintop? 439, okay. <laughs> Matt says that his quote machine says he's still in. You, you must have uh, FC, FXCM. <coughs> All right, so Greg's still on half, and he's out at 439 just before the get, fill of the gap. Okay, and we started to eat into this gap. So it's likely that we'll uh, try and keep munching. Here we go. Are you going to be a lucky dog? Let's say 438.65. Uh-oh. Do we have a winner? 439, Craig. Ding, 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 ding. Light it up, Craig. Krishna wants to double the range. Were you long, Krishna? I, I believe you. Just tell me you were long. If you were long. Double the range. and the, looks about That's close enough for Jazz anyway. Mark, it doesn't matter if you left a lot of money. Didn't you learn anything from this? Leaving money on the table is a good thing. That's another That's another thing you should have learned. Because leaving money means you're not exposed to this. Okay? So take your money and go, goodbye. I got my money. Now I'll look for another setup that I see. Okay? Paul McManus says I'm still long to 445. Okay? This has been very interesting. What a bunch of retards. I assume you mean the Google traders, right? Not us. All right. Here we go. Four forty-five. we're looking for. Are you going to do anything about your stop, by the way? Yes, Krishna, I got one long entry, and that was it. That's all I got. And I stood aside on the rest of this. That's right. I did, but I didn't get kerplowed by the rest of these gaps. That's right. But remember, I could trade other markets at the same time. Stop to the top of the range at 432. Okay. That makes sense, Paul. Yep. Jack says the same thing. Stop at 432. Okay, good. All right. So we're going for 4. Tell me again. We're going for 445, and our stop is at 4, 4, 432. Let's finish it off real quick here before... Mr. Pop-Tart comes downstairs. Uh-oh. It was a low. 435 even. Wide range bars. You can see they're, they're, they're fist fighting. They're dancing around this line. They're trying to decide. They now have officially closed the gap, by the way. See it? And this is a rounding top. The next bar should tell you. Got to leave. Okay, take care, Philip. We're about done anyway. High was 442 and a half. High was 443 and a half. If you do not leave money on the table, you'll find yourself trying to pick top, tops and bottoms, John Rich says. Absolutely. Take that away today, please. It's good to leave money on the table get out then you don't have any just so you know then you don't have any exposure then if it blows take care of sean i'll see you tomorrow and 
444.19. There you go. Everybody's out of 445. Congratulations, guys. So, I think today's lessons are twofold. If you don't see something, you don't have to trade. Obviously, yesterday's lesson was stop losses are a must, period. When you put your limit entry orders in, you have to put stop loss orders in. Today's lesson is also leave money on the table. Have a plan. Trade the plan. If it runs away from you after you get out, it doesn't matter because you're no longer exposed to risk. And then when it gaps, you're not involved. Then you can take your time and look for an entry, okay? There's nothing wrong with not having a position. Don't confuse activity with achievement. You could also be in a different stock or a different commodity or sitting on your hands. You could go to the opera if you want. So, good job, those of you that made the run-up. I'm heading out. Yep, uh, hopefully some of you will pop over and see us at Muris at 3.30 today. I'm going to run as well. I'm Tim Morgent, MarketGeometry.com. I'll see you all tomorrow. It'll be Friday. Take care. Have a great afternoon. Trade well today.